The Mighty Zone 105? Hey, come on. Back up the Minnesotans. Oh, yeah. Mo, you're from Minnesota, right. right? I had a girlfriend from Minnesota. Yeah, People, but she's they're, terrific. They're, they are very together out here, Adam. They've got a huge complex and very nice people. Lots of people working here late at night. Huge complex. No, no, seriously, it's huge. Minnesota, uh, my girlfriend from Minnesota was uh, funny and smart and sassy, just a little bit nutty. Yeah. But other than that, everything was fine. And I remember uh, the two stores I remember, there was one is I got in a bet with her in almost a fist fight over how many people in California knew what Utter Bomb was. <laughs> <laughs> because she said... I guarantee you if I stop someone on the street and ask them what Utter Bomb is, they're going to know what it is. And I said, uh, listen, I'm from North Hollywood, and I guarantee nobody I know has ever heard of Utter Bomb. Oh, yes, they have. Apparently, it's this uh, cream you put on the teeth of the <laughs> cow or uh, on the udder so it doesn't get chapped when it's that sure. 80 degrees below and sure. you got to go out and milk Cows it. Cows and the gals, too. But like uh, no one knew what uh, Utter Bomb was. And uh, the other, well, I'll tell you the other good story later. David? David. How's it going? Good. You're 17. What's up? Hey, Adam, man. I love you, man. You're like my idol. That's good. All right. Try to help you. <laughs> How you doing? Good. What do you want? Um, well, the problem is I was over at my girlfriend's house um, today after school, and my teeth are really killing me for my race. I just got them tightened yesterday. And so I was looking around her medicine cabinet for um for some, like, ibuprofen or something, and I found this little bottle and had some... um what I thought was ibuprofen inside, and it, there were these uh, little yellow pills. So I popped a couple of them in my mouth and drank it down with water. And now your period won't start up again? <laughs> Man, no. I, don't know what, I don't know what to do because I found out she told me that there were birth control pills. And so I don't know. I nothing. Out, uh, no, I nothing. Know. You just get a little nauseated maybe, but that's it. No big deal. They weren't birth control pills I'm anyway. I'm not going to become sterile or anything. Nope. No, uh, you know what? I think David's lying anyway. Who, yeah. who keeps their birth control pills scattered? Who pops them out? Aren't oh, they in that packet? Many, yes. many gals. They do? They pop out. You know, sometimes they pop out when you don't expect it. And yeah, they and by the way, over. since when do birth control pills look anything like an ibuprofen? Well, when you're, so, when you're high and your braces are too tight and yeah. they're affecting your mind. I mean, come on. I didn't even know they were yellow, though. Are they yellow? Well, see, I don't yeah. know anymore. Drew, Drew actually, yeah. I've seen uh, ibuprofen that are very, well, they weren't as small as this, but they were right. small. All right. So if this would have happened to somebody, what, what should they do? And nothing. 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 Uh, you feel fine? Uh, and one more thing. Use the eat a pint of uh, Hagen Dazs yeah. and cry yourself to sleep. Uh, <laughs> you won't feel like watching having Watching Jenny Jones. All right. Okay. One more thing. I was just wondering if I could plug the band that I'm in called Lem. Yeah. Hey, Drew. Yeah. I told you that was a bogus call. Yeah. No, I didn't disagree with you. You didn't? No. No. Okay. And I think Mo my. No, I, I, I just wanted to answer it because I think it, it's something that could have happened or people take extra pills or wondering if these things are toxic and they're not. What color? Do birth control pills come in a yellow? They come in different colors so that you can keep your week straight. Right, yes. but I've never seen a yellow one. Well, you know, it's uh, yeah, 2000. Maybe they did something different for that new millennium. Mo, you, you're not on birth control anymore? No, All right. no, I'm All right. leaving it up to God. I'm just going to put you down for oral sex then tonight. <laughs> Play it safe. All righty. All right, Drew? Yeah. I'm picking another call. Uh, you're, you're up for it, man. Brian? Um, yeah, I got a question for the doctor, though. Yeah. All right. Um, I think about the beginning of this month, I felt like, Probably like a lot of weed, like maybe ten joints throughout the whole day. One single day. Yeah. All right. Like throughout the whole day, though, basically around ten. Okay. And uh, I have to take a drug test uh, next week on Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, but that was you don't you don't people don't smoke ten joints in one day and not have been smoking prior to that. Well, I, I feel quite really. And Brian, yeah, forget about like test, testing positive. You're going to piss a joint in, <laughs> into the beaker. You'll be the only drug test in the world where it's like they didn't have to take it to the lab. There was a joint floating. <laughs> They're going to light it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hadn't smoked like prior to that for like probably like three weeks. Yeah, but you're a regular smoker. How can you? Not Bob really Marley in his prime didn't smoke ten joints in a day. You can't even smoke ten joints in a day. It was a party, like a whole an all day party. Yeah, I know. I mean, I've smoked a lot of weed at a lot of parties, but it, it's 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 really difficult to smoke ten joints in one well, day. It might not have been ten. I just know it was like probably a lot, a lot more than I usually do. Okay, and where where are you trying to get a job? Um, it's not a job. It's for an internship, police academy. Oh, great! <laughs> well, there you have it. 
There you go. All hey. arguments are just settled. Listen, let me tell you something, uh, Brian. The, the reason there's a screening process is because it's important for certain elements to be screened out of certain positions. I'm all for this, by the way. Well, I'm all, I'm all for that, too, but I've, like, stopped. I'm just, you know, I need you, you to... Stopped, you stopped a, few, few, a couple of weeks ago, though, right? Yeah, I haven't... Done How many years did you smoke before you stopped? Probably two. And then you... And how many weeks did you stop before you had the big binge? Probably like two or three. And that was how long ago? Like how long before I smoked the binge? How long ago no. was the 10 joint day? Probably like the beginning of this, like the first, I think. And then when is the te when is the drug test? Uh, next Thursday. I think it's the 23rd. Mm -hmm. uh, you probably make it. you probably make it. All right, is Brian. There I, is there anything I can do to make sure I make it? or? No. Like, Don't smoke pot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's no uh, huh. beads he can rub or anything. No. I heard if you drink green tea. Go ahead. Yeah, just whatever. I have my blessing. Hey, but what about that? I mean, what about drinking massive amounts of fluid, any kind of fluid? Yeah, I mean, that might dilute somewhat the concentration in the urine, possibly, but uh, this is the kind of thing that's metabolized from fat, and it's more uh, an issue of his activity levels and his dietary intake, that kind of thing. All right, let's see. We'll go speak to uh, Tony. Tony? Hey, what's happening? You're 30. What's up? Um, well, I'm having trouble. I've been married about two years, and my wife's a great person, and um, I just have these urges to cheat on her. Nothing ever actually found it or anybody in particular. I just... How old are you? I'm 30. Yeah, you've been yeah. Married. married for two years. How long have you known her before that? About four years before. We got right. married. So you've been together for six years. Right. And but you got together when you were in your early 20s, though. Right. Yeah, 24. Yeah, that's tough. Hey, Drew? Mm. What, are you, what are you doing? Drawing a turtle over there? You know, I'm writing notes about this guy because I don't have a damn computer screen in front of me like you do. Oh, well, listen here, uh, techno ass. I know what you're doing. You're doodling. I tell you to stop doing that every time you're in the studio. I'm married times two years, four years dating, age 30, wants to cheat. That's what I wrote down. All right. Damn lying, you know. Do it in your head. I know what you've drawn. You've drawn Touche Turtle. What's his name? Tony. Tony. It was his psychic dum dum, I drew. <laughs> Tony, can I ask a question? Go ahead. Um, are, do you think that there's a possibility you're looking for some sort of excitement and adventure, something that takes you out of the ordinary, something that you can explore with somebody else and not be responsible towards? No, I don't think that's it. I'm pretty lucky. My wife is she's very active. She satisfies all my needs. I guess. Why do you have to sabotage this relationship? What's going on? Why is intimacy so hard for you? Well, I don't know. I guess I, I relate it to, like, if you like steak, that's your favorite meal. So you're going to have steak every day for the rest why of your didn't, life. Why didn't you try... try, try why did you marry a sizzler then, then, you idiot? <laughs> why didn't you try the chuck round earlier before you got married? What about dressing wow. up the steak a little different? Yeah. How about putting yeah. a little bit of holidays I mean? on this that? This isn't that. This is not that. No, it isn't. Did your family... Did your parents divorce? Oh, yeah. And was it a nasty divorce? Yeah. How old were you? I was young, three. Like three. And was it like a violent, awful divorce? Um, I suppose it was pretty violent. They, uh, you know, always said bad things about each other, and you know. Cruise on a roll. Well, I'm just getting, picking up on. He he establishes intimacy, he gets a marriage going, gets the relationship going, and then can't hang with it. It's it's he has to sabotage it. It's it's too much to be intimate over time for fear of this kind of thing happening to you. What you saw happening at a very delicate, vulnerable period in your life, you're convinced it's going to happen to this person you love now. They're going to leave. Hey, Drew. And you're going to make that happen. Drew, where's your, uh, where's your computer? I don't want it to It's uh, right. in my luggage somewhere. That's right, it is. You see that? I've it's got a new computer. inspired, interested Drew. I've got one of their computers in front of me. Uh, yeah, but obviously you don't know how to work it because you're, you're not buried in it like you are I've, when you're here. I've got it in front of me. Okay, relax over there, would you? Listen, he hasn't done anything yet, and if he was uh, out to sabotage, he would have done something. He's not, but he's thinking about it. All guys think this way. Uh, Tony, Yo. these are natural thoughts. The, pro the thing is, is you can't let them progress. You understand? Right. You I, to, I don't to... go out clubbing. I don't go out. Right. All okay. Out. Well, then you're just having the same thoughts all guys have. Once okay. you get into a little uh, therapy and work out some of these feelings, and no, that could you happen. You don't have. It could? No. Tony, why not? Do they like guys named Tony in therapy? That's why not. Tony, <laughs> yeah. get in the, do a little therapy. Work out some of these problems. 
Because otherwise, you'll you'll never be happy, even if you're on top of someone else. Yeah. All right. Good. You have any kids? Yeah. Okay. Right, well, there you go. Come, right. come on. Hey, Drew. Yeah. Relax over there. You, you know what it is? I've got I've got a great system here in terms of the, the sound quality that's coming through and all. Yeah. It's easy to overwhelm you. I guess so, but I'm not used to your uh, participation participation in the show this way. You're usually uh, distracted and off you're, somewhere you're, else. This is this is like a dysfunctional marriage where I can't win. That's <laughs> right. I can't win. All right. Well, too little, too much. Oh, That's please, right. please. You're either a Rumpelstiltskin over here <laughs> or you're some kind of auctioneer. <laughs> now, come on. Let's strike a, a nice balance, auctioneer. buddy. All right. Relax. We'll go back to the phone. Sarah? Hello. You're 14. You're on with Deborah Wilson and Mo Collins from Mad TV. Saturday night, 11 o'clock. Sketch comedy stuff to do. Go ahead. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay, sir. Oh, um, well, my sister, she's 15, and I, well, she and her boyfriend they broke up, and well, they were broken up for like two weeks, so she moved with my grandmother, and I ended up sleeping with her boyfriend. He's 16. Nancy. Yes. Hello? Yes. And then just. Like a couple like days ago, they just got back together. Mm -hmm. How old is he? What? He's sixteen, and you're how old? Fourteen. Yeah. Fourteen. Oh boy. Does she know? What? Does she know that you no. slept with him? And I don't think he's gonna tell her because I don't. He wouldn't have gone back together. All right. You want to be with him, don't you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's uh, the whole drill here. Yep. Now you're gonna tell somebody, right? Right. Right. Are you gonna tell someone, Sarah? Um, I, I don't know. I, I think you're going, here's the point. When you do something like this, you normally your answer is, oh my God, no, I would die if anyone found out. The fact that you're sort of ambivalent about it to me says that you're probably going to find a way to let her find out about it in hopes that they'll break up right. so that you can somehow get in there. Wouldn't you say that's? Mm -hmm. A fair estimation of your situation, sir? Every fortune I've ever spoken to who has had sex with some older guy believes this is the guy they're going to marry. Believe it. Drew, you want to tell a story about having sex with a 19-year-old when you were 14 and the guy you wanted to marry? I got over it. Okay, I don't think you are, buddy. <laughs> Sarah? Uh-huh. Okay, listen. Uh, I don't know how we're going to talk you out of this, but don't tell him. Or her. Her? My sister? Don't tell your sister. Okay. You know, here's the promise I want you to make me, Sarah. Not only do I want you not to tell your sister, but I don't want you to do anything stupid that's going to let her find out in a very obvious way, like tell her best friend and then tell her best friend not to tell her, which, of right. course, we all know means her best friend's going to tell her, and then you'll have a polite excuse but you won't because we'll know what the truth is. Well, actually, my mom, she already knows. No. <laughs> How's your mom already know? Because um, I spent the night, and when I came home, my mom asked me what I was at, and I told her at my sister's friend's house, and then she was like, no, because my grandma, she's really overprotective. Yeah. She sent the cops over there, and they're like, no, you didn't. And then later on, my mom got it out because they couldn't find my sister's she boyfriend. She sent the cops over there? Yeah, because <laughs> my, my yeah. grandma, she's... She just, she just walked. Uh, I'm on probation. I'm going to You're on probation? Mm -hmm. What are you on probation for? For fighting. Okay. I hey. got expelled from my school. Hey, screwball, listen to me. <laughs> listen to me, goddammit. I, you know how much money I paid in taxes last year so your screwball grandma could send the cops all over the town chasing their own tails? You know how much I spend on your ass? You straighten up. I'm tired of it. <laughs> I'm getting charged. I'll, I'll put you in a hole, throw a tiger down there with you. I don't got time for your troublemakers. Now you start uh, reading and writing and uh, learn your math and uh, go off to college somewhere. Stop having indiscriminate sex with your sister's boyfriend and stop getting into trouble. You hear me? Mm -hmm. Tired of you being a burden on the system. Where is your Where's your dad? Um, in Palm Springs. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Where? Why are there any no males around that house? Are the cops who show up once a week? Oh, my stepdad's in jail. Well, there uh, you go. I Oh, I'll tell you. I'd like to get hold of you. How old's your grandma? 37? No, she's like 50 something. 50 something? My she, mom's 40. She must be. How many, how, I, I swear, I'd like, how many kids does your grandma have? One. She she would have 14, but they all died. Boom. Oh, what? They all died what? In, in their stomach. They all died in their stomachs? Yeah, yeah, except for they were in their teens. That's the only twist on that one. 
Wait a minute. She miscarried 13 times? Uh-huh. Uh, Was she doing drugs or something? No. Um, I, cause she, she's like, she overdo stuff. And when she has a headache, she makes it turn. And, like, she has to go to the hospital and stuff. That's why I moved out. Oh, mm. no. No. Mm. But that, that uh, can you have a, uh, is there, a, can, how many miscarriages can you have, True? Uh, yes, uh -huh. every nine, every few months you can have one. All right, Sarah, listen to me, sweetie. You're, you're 14. Don't turn out like your mom and your grandma and like whatever your sister might turn out. Stop the chaos. You know what I mean? Sleeping with the boyfriends and the cops and the, can you stop all that? Uh, you know what I mean? I, I know I know your dad's an idiot and your stepdad did something to you before he went to jail and then now the whole life is, is just going to be one big acting out thing and men are going to mean something weird to you and it's all a mess. But can you stop acting out at least? Can you not get pregnant? Can you stay in school? Can you? Well, my sister is pregnant, but it's not from her boyfriend. It's... Um. My friend. I'll tell you. All right. Hey, Sarah? Mm -hmm. Please, uh, where do you live? Um, in Rancho. Oh, in Rancho? You're in Southern California? Mm hmm I'm moving to Canada. You're coming with me. You understand? I'm going to get you some Norplant. I'm going to take you to Canada. I'm going to raise you like my own. <laughs> Can't, if, Sarah, I, I, I do not get pregnant. Do you hear me? Okay. Okay. Don't tell your sister and don't get pregnant. I, I don't even care. Forget about it. I don't even care if you go to junior college in your life. Don't get pregnant. I... I I, I, when I'm in charge, I'm going to come. Drew, you know, I, I keep threatening to to, to uh, take power, but I, I swear I will go to her and I'll put Norplant in her. I'll go, listen. But it's not just about. I've seen the future. I know, but I don't have enough. There's not enough resources. Yes, she needs counseling. And no, she that's not what I was about everything. to say. What yes, is we it? know that. And we know a lot of children out here are troubled in those situations. But it's not just about saying, you know what, don't get pregnant and don't have this happen because we don't live their existence. And the one thing they need to know, at least have in their subconscious mind, as well as their conscious mind, is about their self-esteem. That every time they run to somebody for sex, what they're doing is creating more chaos, and they don't see that. What they honestly think in their own logic is that every time they do that, they're running to an intimate space because someone's going to love them and take care of them, and they're going to live the illusion until they get hurt. And until until they understand that it has to do with them and not about the sex, they're going to keep running there to get pregnant. And Absolutely. So Sarah, if, and so, Sarah, if you're listening... Sarah, if you're listening, let me tell you something. Every time you run, it's an experiment. And it's an experiment that's constantly going to fail because you're 14 years old. And you may think it's love, but you don't know what you have to offer yet until you find out what yourself is about. Away from the sex, away from those things. Stay in school. Start getting involved in extracurricular activities. Find out what your passions are. Find out what your joys are. Become a well-rounded human being so that when you're ready to get involved in a relationship when you get older, you have something to offer other than you're just your body. All right, Deborah, let me tell you a quick story. And Deborah, Deborah's 100 percent right. I still put the Nor plan in her because she's two wine coolers away from forgetting Deborah's inspirational speech and having her bo uh, sister's boyfriend hop on her again. But let me tell you a little story. I was going down that road when I was uh, 14, 15 years old. Remember that, Drew? I told you about my troubled past, and then oh, yeah. I discovered a passion, a passion for napping, a passion for masturbating, <laughs> and all of a sudden it cleared things up. I found something to do. I, I should do a PSA, Drew. You know, people talk about sports or music. I'll talk about mm -hmm. napping and masturbating. Uh, it's something you never talk about. Yeah, I, I mean, I'd like to uh, steer the youngins that direction. If more kids could stay home, masturbate, nap, then they masturbate again and nap later. <laughs> think, think of the utopia we'd be living in. They wouldn't be out on the streets. They wouldn't be uh, rolling old people. They wouldn't That's be getting pregnant. All my hiatus. That's what I'm doing. Let's do that. <laughs> all right, Drew. Huh? You're uh, over there in uh, Minneapolis on the uh, the mighty uh, Zone 105. The mighty Zone 105, our fabulous affiliate in Minnesota. Yeah. We're going to uh, take ourselves a little break. We have uh, Deborah Wilson and Mo Collins both here from uh, Mad TV. We'll be back after this. Yep, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. Dr. Drew is over there in Minneapolis, but he's uh, on the horn. Or I'm here. Yeah, yeah that's, you know that's what? the horn. I was telling him earlier that I was looking. You know I care about you. And and I, me? Yeah, of course I do. Oh. We need to you as if as if you don't know that. No, I didn't know. You no. know I think the world of you. I don't see you that often, and it's always a pleasure and a blessing what I do. Oh, yeah, but right. I, I see I see Dr. Drew less often, and I admire him very much. So hold on a second. What, what the hell's going on over there? Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Isn't that nice? <laughs> what is that? 
It's, a, it's, an, it's one of those boom mic on a, on a, on a hinge, you know? Oh, on an okay. elbow. <laughs> and I, I collapsed the whole thing. Jesus Christ, Deborah's uh, halfway into professing her love for me, and you got to open the, count, the Count Dracula's coffin I, back there. I got so excited, I didn't know what to do. All I'm right. just saying that I'm sorry that you're not here tonight, but it's a pleasure to at least be able to, to speak with you and do this tonight, but I was looking forward to hugging you. Oh. I'll give him a That's nice good, I'll give him a nice hug when he comes Don't back. Don't feel guilty. I'm, give, I'm still giving you one. I, you just can't Thank you. Are, you. are you going to be around tomorrow night, or where are you going to be? <laughs> I'll be from here again tomorrow night. Oh, really? All yeah. right. Sunday, I give I'm you like you, Adam. I go out and serve my time with our affiliates and get to know the people that oh, we use. Sh- go to the sh- communities we serve. You <laughs> shill yourself to the uh, drug industry. Oh, but, sh- uh, yeah. You swing by and do a little glad handing. To an affiliate on occasion. That's what it is. Don't try to put a don't try to put your spin on this thing. I'm gonna give you a hug from Deborah that it's gonna include a, a full release reach around when you uh, <laughs> when you come back on Sunday, all right? What actually is full release. You'll know. No. You'll know what it is when you release fully. Deborah Wilson is here and uh, so is Mo Collins from uh, I'll release, I'll release fully. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, you will. Not like those three quarter ones your wife gives you. I give you a full release. All right? You'll never know what hits you. Thank you. Saturday night, uh, everyone, Mad TV, 11 o'clock on uh, Fox. And we'll speak to uh, Janine, who's 17. Janine? Hello. What's up? Hey. How are you, Adam? Good. Oh, sure. Bruce, good, too. Okay. Um, I went to a corn concert a couple of weeks ago. Um, and. I met this guy who I guess goes to my school, and um, I accepted a beer from him. And um, about half an hour later, I started feeling kind of dizzy, mm-hmm. and like I was like blacking out for like seconds at a time, and I couldn't really keep my balance that well. Yeah. And um, I was just feeling really nasty and kind of nauseated, so he escorted me to go sit down at some seats, and where I guess I passed out. And. Um, my when I woke up, I was with my friends. They said it had been um, about half an hour since they found me, and um, I'm like feeling okay now. And um, I've been seeing the guy at school. Um, I think it's him, and I don't know if I should like confront him. I don't think I was like raped or violated at all. I don't know. How long did the effects last for? Pardon? How long did the effects last for? Um, I was feeling like kind of dizzy the like morning after, but I was okay. Anyway, your friends woke you up and took you home, and yeah, yeah. After what period of time were you unconscious? You think? Still um, about a half hour. I'm not entirely sure. I think it was for about like yeah, 45 minutes, half an hour. And where okay. were you? Where was this? At Anaheim? Um, no, Oakland. Oh, okay. you know, I, I think it's probably GHP. Uh, what's that? Gamma hydroxybutyrate. It's a chemical that's very similar to Valium-like drugs. It, uh, a small thimbleful can really intoxicate people. Uh-huh. It, it's a dangerous drug. We're starting to see addictions to it now. It's very commonly used in raves and at concerts. Uh-huh. It's a date rape drug. You can slip it in. It's yeah. relatively tasteless. People can put it in alcohol and whatnot. Uh-huh. The problem with it is very difficult to dose. You can easily go from sort of low-level intoxication to coma and seizure and death. No, no, no. Somebody's endangering you by putting that in there. And you want to stop at seizure, right? Yeah. Right. Hey, listen, it's it's fine. She just doesn't have any, you know, any brain damage. The only long-term effects is your boobs shrink and your ass gets bigger as you get older. Okay. Okay. Other than that, it shouldn't be any problems. You're 17. It's no problem. Okay. Okay. And um, I've been, like, seeing him around. I don't know if I should, like, confront him or, like, report him to anybody. I mean, I have, like, headaches occasionally. I don't know if it's related. No, I don't think it's anything to do with that. What do, you, uh, what, do you, what do you reckon his plan was, though? I mean, I if, if he gets you effed up and then he takes you to, to your seat or his seat and sits you down. Mm-hmm. See, I mean, Adam, was... Adam, that's the kind of foreplay you generally engage in, isn't it? I usually just hit him with a frying pan. <laughs> Okay. Were there other people around when you were out? Um, not really. It was kind of. I was like, I was kind of with my friends, but you know, everyone kind of gets separated in the whole big mess, and I don't know. But he um, took you down to his seats to yeah, sit okay. down. Well, I don't know. There were just some like seats in the back, and um, we went down there. I, I'm. I mean, I would guess that he was gonna like do something to me, and I don't mm-hmm. know what happened with his plan, but. Well, but, but when you woke up, you didn't feel any any genital discomfort, no, no, did you? No. So um, I don't think anything happened, but. Yeah, but how was he going to do something in the, in the middle of a concert? I don't know. That's what I'm asking. But Adam, that's my point. You would you would engage in this kind of foreplay, right? I would. <laughs> yeah, you always said that you would into- that if intoxication was. No, oh well, yes. As the as the we as the we said, juice him up and go. He just not, overshot not it. it. 
Yeah, you know, we're shot. No, I, I, I wouldn't. I never would drug anybody. Just like, come on, baby, have another wine cooler. <laughs> and, and the cool. difference Everyone's is doing it. The difference is they know they're drinking a the wine cooler. You idiot. Right. Okay, and, and sure, I put a little Spanish fly in there every once in a while, but that didn't happen. And it never worked. When, and here's my my uh, question to you: If you felt like you confronted him, what kind of answer did you, would you expect from this person? Do you, would you did you honestly expect this person to apologize? And no, say, uh, yeah. Or, or did you expect him to deny it? What was your expectation? <laughs> um, I don't know. That's that's kind of why I was asking. I wouldn't expect him. I don't know. I just kind of wanted some. Uh, here, here's, here'd be, here'd be my take, Janine. Okay. It's not worth confronting him because he's not going to say anything. Yeah. Because I have no idea what you're talking about. Number two, if I were you, I wouldn't even think that I was drugged. I was not go through life that way. I just think you had a beer and, uh, God knows, uh, maybe you did too many push-ups that morning or something. No. But, uh, but listen, at the same time, don't take any more drinks. Exactly. Yeah, don't bring that again. Guys who you came out on you. top this time. Yeah. You won that Allow one. Allow that to be some healthy closure for you. Don't do it again. I wish someone would get me drugged up every once in a while. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, no you don't. Really? You really don't. Nope. Well, like some girl? No? Well, if it were me, it would be a controlled environment, so that'd be fine. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what would that environment be, your van? You'd be surprised what environment I take you to. <laughs> Let's talk to Claude at 16. How about that, Alan? Oh, hey, Drew, what's up? I was trying to figure out what environment you control. You're no good. Deborah and I were going to. I was no. trying to figure out where we are going, all right? Well, listen, I just I thought maybe the batting cage or something like that, you know, somewhere... Sure, you know, we could we could have a good time, but then, you know, I could take a few cuts. Sure. sure. Have a good time. Claude? Hey, Man Ace. Hey, that's my name. What's up? That's my rap name, Man yeah. Ace. Man Ace. Got it. That's my main, main man name. <laughs> that's, that's Snoop. He knows who Man Ace is. I actually have a friend named Mayo. One named Mayo and one named Cat Food. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's... One named Mayo, and they're listening tonight. So, hi, Mayo, and hey, Cat Food. But that that's not their uh, Christian name. Oh. Is it the Cat Food? <laughs> How <laughs> stone must, must the, the parents have been? Claude? Hey, what's up, Drew? What's up, hey, Claude? Uh, well, I think my girlfriend's breasts are, like, shrinking. What do you mean? Like, they're, they're like, look smaller now than, than they were. You yeah. lose weight? You're just used to them. That's all. <laughs> and I think she has an eating disorder. Oh, all right. Well, she's losing weight. And, uh, yeah. A absolutely. If people get eating disorders, they uh, will lose breast ultimately, because that's fatty tissue. They'll, they'll lose a lot of their sort of female characteristics, and they'll start uh, having no period. All right. And do you know anybody that I could go, like, tell her to go see or something? What's she doing? Like, I mean, her. like, she, like, for her eating disorder. She's anorectic, right? Yeah, I think so. How, how old is she? 16. And where are you calling from? San Diego. How much does she weigh? Um, like, 100 pounds. You should refer to the, the Scripps Department of Psychiatry. All right. Okay. How tall is she? What? How tall is she? Uh, like five three. How do you how do you know what she's doing? I don't know. Well, is she not eating? She like says she's like already ate before she left. When there we go or something. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. Don't tell her her boobs look smaller either. That's All not right. going to help anything. Yeah, because anorexia is. It, and and please help me out here, Doctor Drew. But it, it mm -hmm. it's an emotional disorder as well. Oh, well, and surely. And it, it it definitely affects the self-esteem so if you tell her that they're smaller it's going to make her withdraw even more yeah well you got to get her some help that's all Claude, you you like this you got to do it very high fatality rate with this disease if she's 16 just getting into this she needs help immediately all right uh before we take a break let me just speak to uh josh is 14 he looks at other guys in the bathroom what's enough that's a problem josh josh yeah you look at other guys in the bathroom yeah. I just did that today, and uh, my friend yelled at me. Who? Uh, Daniel. How dare you? We went to, <laughs> what do you mean? What was he doing? Well, we went to a restaurant. He said, uh, I'm going to wash my hands before we ate. And I said, uh, yeah, I'm going to wash my hands, too. And we got up, and we both headed into the bathroom together. He was uh, a couple steps in front of me, and he was taking a leak when I opened the door. And it's one of these, like, um, Middle Eastern places. I don't know if you guys know uh, about Middle Easterns and their... Uh, their sense of style, but uh, they like to put mirrors everywhere, even in the bathroom. There's mirrors on every wall. Like you're, you're, you're
The mirror. From I mean, the screen. Mirror, mirror on the <laughs> ceiling, mirror on the floor. I, I don't know what is up with mirror these people. Mirror on the ceiling and pink oh, on What is up with these people? You know, they put pubic hair on statues. They have <laughs> no decorum at all. So I walk in the door, and as I open the door, I'm staring at a mirror, which is just to the side of the urinal, which is reflecting which his penis is in. Mm-hmm. His, his penis has surrounded me in this bathroom now, because it's, not, it's like a fun house. You, didn't have, you can't help but look at I it. That's why okay. they put him up there. I open it. Film. Yeah, I opened the door and I'm like, what? Did you shoot at it? Did you fire at it? <laughs> <laughs> I saw the penis. I was like, hey, Daniel, wow, nice penis. You know? And he's like, hey, what are you looking at? I, said, I can't help it. And he's like, uh, all right, stop looking at my penis. And I said, uh, you know, do you have to take your nuts out too when you pee? You know, I mean, don't you just take your penis out? Why do you take your nuts out too? And he's like, stop looking at my penis. And I'm like, well, tell me why you take your nuts and your penis out just to urinate. But that scares me that you would want to ask that question. Yeah, it was. I found it distracting. He wasn't holding it right. He, was, <laughs> he had his hand around his nuts, not his penis. I, you know what I'm saying, Drew? Yeah, it's pretty, it sounds bizarre. But now that you appreciate our relationship, yeah, yeah. It's very easy when we go and pee together. That's right. I always look at Drew's uh, dork, too, when he's uh, next <laughs> to me in the airport. Very really nice. Gotta- but you really got to get out there and start checking out penis. All right. Uh, we're going to take a little break, Josh. Yeah. I'll explain to you in even, even more detail why it's uh, okay for you to check out the junk, all right? Okay. Hey, I'm going to be in the relationship chat room at drdrew.com. If people have questions they want to get through on the air, can't get through on the phones, it's drdrew.com, one word, relationship chat. All right. I'm going to be in the Westwood One bathroom. I'll miss you. All right. I'll be back after this. <laughs> This is Adam Carolla. This is Dr. Drew. Stay tuned for more Love Line on the Zone 105. It's Love Line. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Forget about the fax number. Our guest tonight from Mad TV. Deborah, oh, Deborah Wilson, Mo Collins. I, 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 you know, I have the world's worst uh, habit. I, uh, I get to the show. I'm strung out. I'm tired. I've been working all day on the Man Show, by the way, which is on uh, right now on Comedy Central. So you guys may want to just shut the radio show and uh, go ahead and tune into uh, Comedy <laughs> Central and watch that. But uh, I come here. I'm, I've been drinking coffee uh, all day. I, I never get enough sleep. I'm tired. I can't remember anything. And then I have my little notepad, and my little notepad has a few beats on it, name of the show, time it's on, name of the guest, things like that. But then through the course of the show, I tend to doodle on it so that it's uh, it's, it's really, it's not recognizable. Now, uh, Boy, we'd have a great time with that. Deborah, is, uh, is Deborah's mic? Uh, yeah, now it's gone, yes. Okay. Uh, I, I know Mad TV and Deborah and Mo, so it, it's all right, but uh, sometimes I get myself into trouble when it's some band I, I never heard of or something, and there's eight guys in here, and I've doodled all over everyone's name and the name of the album and all that stuff. So, uh, Drew? Mm-hmm. Hey, Drew, let me uh, let me bring you uh, bring bring this point up again. Yeah. Uh, do not get so deep into your webcast. There's a noticeable difference between when you're uh, distracted and when you're not. Because the first break, you weren't into it, and you're all over it. And uh, the first now, break, I actually, now first, you're into it. You're, you're so screwed up at it. The first break, actually, I was I was, had three guys here working and trying to get it set up. Right. And I was totally involved in doing that. But it was not set up. You were not reading it, and you were not uh, corresponding no, I was with somebody reading like crazy it. trying to figure out how to set the damn thing up. I was completely involved in that. No, you were not. Yes, I was. You were not dealing with somebody who was on the other line in, in who was on your website. You may have been mm. trying to mechanically hook it up. You weren't monitoring it like uh-huh. you normally are. There's a noticeable difference. You don't notice it because you're immersed in your computer. Hmm. Listen, I'm telling you, it's a big difference. Stop doing it. Mm-hmm. Okay, hold on a second. I got to spare the guess for this. But it, Drew, mm-hmm. remember we were talking about this? Your computer? Drew? Drew? Hey, Drew. Drew, don't screw with me because I'll leave this goddamn show and that's all you got. I got five other gigs. <laughs> you, you understand? 
You, mm-hmm. your, your wife will your wife will kill you b- before uh, the tax man does. You mm-hmm. now listen to me, screwball. You got this computer thing going, and we agreed that you can't look through it the whole goddamn show because it's too distracting because you get immersed in it. So we thought, mm-hmm. all right, we'll take some questions from it, but mm-hmm. that never went down that way. You stayed okay, buried in it the whole show. If that's what we do, we'll do it that way. That's fine. Well, that's the I'll way we. What do you mean? That's the way we agreed to do no, it. That's fine. If that, if, if, I think it's the proper place to talk about it. Be off the air, but that's fine. Well, I, that. we first off, we never talk off the air because you're too busy with your wife. <laughs> do I suspect a little jealousy? No. <laughs> and your friends, your lily white friends from Pasadena. Now listen to me, Drew. Mm. We discussed <laughs> this. Do you understand? Okay. All right. And what was our agreement? I'll, I'll go to 10 minutes this, then I'll, then I'll shut it down. That's fine. What was our agreement? I'm not sure. I didn't understand that there was an agreement. But if, if, if that's it, I understand it, and that'll be that. No, our, our agreement is, is because it's too distracting for you to keep your face buried in it the entire show, that we would just take 10 minutes and take some okay. calls from it. Okay. Or take Good. some we'll questions that. from it. That's that fine. way, you get your drdrew.com plug-in, and uh, you get to have your computer, and we get some questions. It helps the show, but you can't, okay. you can't keep it open the whole show. What if I just bought a computer in here and just kept it open the whole show looking at model airplane websites? Very good for you. Okay, look, and he can't even answer. He can't even debate. He's so busy with his computer. Please. Drew? Yeah. Come on. Stop that. Get your head in the game. Now, where was I? Wasn't he complaining half an hour ago that I was too involved? Yeah, he was, what he's yelling me about before. All right, but that was that was in a sharp contrast to the last month where you've had your head buried in the computer and you haven't said a word. It just threw me off. I, I, I've now compensated for you and DrDrew.com by having to come in here and say an extra 5,000 syllables a night. You hear me? Stop making me do all the work. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I, hey, Drew? Yeah. He, 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 or, or I'll just get paid more, one or the other. So, Adam, yeah, as go ahead. Cargo, when I was speaking more, that was not good. That was fine. You okay, were we'll you were that. passionate. You were involved. Let's I haven't that, seen then. you. I haven't seen you that way in let's a month. That, then. That's it was fine. noticeable. Then let's do more of that. That's fine. I, I've been asking for you to do that, but you will not shut your goddamn computer during the show. You stare at it. You drift off into it. And you don't know you're doing it. So either let's devote us, uh, let's devote ten minutes to it and then shut the thing down. All right. Well, back to the point. All right. Yeah. And I got to feel like an a-hole for being right all the time. Let's see if we name my book. Diane? Hello. Makes her pants of aggressive over there. <laughs> Give me that crap. You're 28. What's up? Yes. Um, uh, love Mad TV. Um, despise the man show. However, just wondering if I... No, no, no. Let's put her on hold. I'm sorry. All right. All right. Go ahead, Diane. I was just wondering if it was strange if I was dating a 19-year-old. You're 28? Yes. Yes. Why? Are you, are you divorced? No. You've ne- never been married? Did no. you just get out of a big relationship? Uh, no. Really? Well, you obviously and... you have questions about it, otherwise you wouldn't have called. You obviously yeah. have doubts about it yourself, otherwise you wouldn't have put yourself in a, a public place to, to, to find out what's going on. Right. I don't I don't know. I just just wondering if that was socially unacceptable. Half my friends say it's cool. Look, it's not about being socially acceptable. It's what is good or is not good or healthy for you. Mm-hmm. Right? And if somebody, an 18-year-old, a 19-year-old, a 28-year-old are different places in their lives. The thing is, though, is all the guys my age are complete sluts. What? Did I? No. No. I do we're saying that you've been, you've been hurt by somebody, and that's why you look for somebody who's more of a toy and less of a real person to you. Yes. I don't look at his, look at him as a toy though. No, but listen. But you're me. looking at other men that are your age in one general perspective, and to have that perspective, you had to have gone through some experience. Do you miss being 19 yourself? Um. I do. <laughs> no, I, well, I don't know. Maybe. All right, yeah. listen. Here, here's the easy answer to this. Uh, anytime we talk to someone who's dating someone considerably younger, or of course, something happen, or something happen. No, not necessarily. It, it's just it's a way to escape intimacy. You're dating right. someone. Well, but, yeah. Well, okay. Something. Yeah. All right. Are you looking to just to have fun and have a good time with this person? No, right. we're pretty serious. Okay. So, do you want to get married? Yeah. Oh. Eventually. All right. Does he? At nineteen? I don't know. Not now, but perhaps later. When he's thirty. I don't know. <laughs> well, where do you think he's at? Do you have any idea where he's at? Um, he 
says that's what he's interested in in a few years. How long have you been dating him? Um, three months. Okay, and uh, anything we should know about with you? Such as? I don't know. Where's your history? Oh, I guess through the whole plethora of, oh, date rapes, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been through all that. All right. Well, that sheds some light on it. All right. Okay. It, it's just, seriously, I mean, guys my own age are just horn dogs and well, no you haven't found someone outside of that but yeah. it's not that's not true at all that's well, not true at all guys at 19 are hornier and guys at 28 exactly. what are you talking right. about but it's not the horniness though it, it's like guys my age don't know how to love it's like they've already been tamed. and you expect a 19 year old to know that <laughs> guys your yeah, age don't know how to love but 19 year olds oh yeah well, you, you can't, so, are you going to try and save him from becoming one of those sluts I don't know. Maybe it's. You know, know what I mean? Keep him, keep him fresh for yourself. Look, both, both Adam and I have been 19 and have 19 year old friends, and I promise you, whatever happens at 28 is much worse at 19. Yeah, I mean, what do you, you know how to love at 19, but you don't know how to love at 28. It's ridiculous. But anyway, listen, Diane, uh, have fun. I hope things uh, work out for you. But understand, you know, the date rape and the dad and all that, uh, whatever it is, we didn't get into, but you alluded to. That's uh, probably more powerful than than the 19-year-old at this point, so you should look into that. All right, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back after this. Five. It's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Phone number 1-800-LVE-191. Deborah Wilson and Mo Collins are our guests tonight. They're from Mad TV, Saturday night, 11 o'clock on Fox. And we are going to go and speak to... Did you guys pick a call? Well, it's really up to you. This is Ezra, I told, 17. I told you guys to pick, uh, pick some calls here. Ezra, 17. Oh, look at Drew, everybody. Computer shut. What's up there, Ezra? Not much. All right, what do you want? Hurry. Um, well, I've been seeing this girl for about three weeks now, and she's 19. And she's, like, she's like got her whole life ahead of her and everything, and it's all planned out. She plans to be married by 21, and have her first kid by 23, and I'm not really ready for that. And yeah. I Neither is she. She sees it. Yeah, you know? that's well, right. And it has been three weeks, so you're going to have to kind of commit one way or the other. As You've well. been with her three weeks? Yeah, I, I'm just not ready for You've been that. with her three weeks, idiot? Yeah. Okay, start listening. <laughs> Please. Right. You, you just don't want to be with her, really, do you? I mean, she's got her own little sort of agenda going, and... You don't want to be part of that. It's the, most, it's the most retarded question I've ever heard in my life, though, Ezra. You've been with her for three weeks. You think you have to commit to some sort of marriage at this point? No. She she plans to be married by 21, and I'm not ready for any of that. And well, it has I'm nothing to do with it. you. Right. It, it has nothing to do with you. She has an agenda whether you're with her or not. If it were somebody else, she'd still have that agenda, so don't take it personally. If you don't feel comfortable in the situation, you need to get out. And then let me tell you something. There's no way that you're going to say something there without hurting her because when somebody has a plan in their mind and someone doesn't fit it, they're going to get hurt. And your bottom line is this. You have a choice. You can stay in it and get trapped in a situation that doesn't suit you, is not comfortable or healthy for you, or you can get out and let her get hurt and get over it because her agenda is already set. She sets herself up for disappointment with those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. All right, Ezra. Let, listen, don't don't get confused here, buddy, and don't get her pregnant. Yeah, oh. boy. <laughs> All right, are you guys having sex? No. Huh? No. Huh? No. <laughs> well, why, how, why is it you're talking? She's talking about you worried about marriage and stuff. Hey, listen, nice, if, you, if you like she her. I don't know. If, if, you imagine she must have been pushing that right as soon as they got in the relationship. She, may, she yeah. might just be talking. I mean, who the yeah. hell knows? Ezra, if you like her, just relax, take it slow, and wear a kind of that's all. All right, let's uh, knock off a couple that have been on hold for a while. Uh, Michael? Michael? Uh-oh. Michael's he's shifting up your sleeve. Yeah, I wonder where he's calling from. Yeah, but he's going to wake up pretty soon. He <laughs> woke up in the middle of the night uh, hallucinating. That's his question. Yeah, he'll be up soon. Yeah, he'll be having a... Uh, <laughs> A Vietnam flashback any second. Uh. Mm. And Dr. True, even though he's not on the air, and, and have you had cases or heard of cases where people wake up hallucinating without the drugs? Oh, yeah, all the time. It, it's, uh, there, there's various sort of versions of this. Some of them are associated with night terrors. Some of them are these sort of locked-in syndromes people get. Others are very vivid sort of flashbacks. It, it depends what his history is. Josh? Some, some are seizures. Mm. Yeah. Josh, you're 30. What's up? Um... I want to know if it's still safe for me to have sex with my pregnant wife. How pregnant is she? 
uh, about two months now. Go yeah. for it. Let me just tell you, that is possibly one of the best times to have sex with your wife. Now, we, we, pregnant? Did, yes. we did that, and there was a little bit of bleeding, and I don't think I'm getting a straight answer from the doctor, so I was just curious if there's any. Uh, you probably yeah. just caught the kid in the eye or something. Yeah. Have, they done, have they done an ultrasound yeah. recently on her? <laughs> what? Have they done an ultrasound recently on her? Yeah, uh, just about a week ago. How do things look? Uh, everything looks fine. We heard about Placent Placenta's in the right place? Um, it, yeah, it's in the right place. It's a little bit low. Do they think that that might be what's causing the bleeding? That's what, well, they, yeah, they said that that might be it. They don't really know for sure. Okay, but that's, that's kind of a big deal. you, you got to clarify. That's the one situation which you might want not want to be having sex. In general, if there are no problems with the pregnancy, you can have sex right on through to the end. Right. Well, there's no see. preterm labor. I know the head has spoken out. Yeah. Uh, Mo Collins, our uh, guest tonight, was telling us that uh, while she's actually up in the stirrups, actually uh, delivering, <laughs> her husband was in there. He misinterpreted. <laughs> but it's true. Course, that later, later in the just, pregnancy. Once he gets the video camera out, he figures, you know, yeah. time, that, time to perform. Women get more stimulated later in the pregnancy. It is fantastic. Hey, it, Josh, why don't you think the doctor is being straight with you? What does that mean? Okay, I asked the question, is it okay for me to have sex with her? You know, is, am I the one that's causing it? And the answer was, well, I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't know, but he didn't. Oh, what, what did he say about not having sex? Um, he said, well, you might consider not having it. Okay, that would be safer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what, where, where is the but do other here? things. Listen, if you can't put, put your penis inside of her, though, do those other things. Yeah. Because she is just raging with the hormones, I man. She is. Put your foot in there. Right? She's, 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 feeling, she's feeling like a guy does every day. Yeah, <laughs> and she needs to be touched a lot, too. There's a lot going on. So, uh, Mo, give us uh, give us some um, good, concrete examples play of by why, play. why it's so different when you're pregnant than and when you're not pregnant, <laughs> actually. Am I having sex? Well, your, your hormones are raging. I mean, your nipples, it's just like you can barely, you know, a wind passes and you just practically have an orgasm. Uh, you're... You're... More exposed down below, for one thing. Yeah, there's also there's more there's pressure down there, there's congestion building yeah. up. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And the things open up a little bit, so it's easier access on the clitoris. If ah, you will. nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah, riding's a little easier. Everything, wow. everything's better. Everything is better. And you were yeah. having sex uh, how far before you gave birth? Boy, pretty much right up to it. Really? really? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Nice. Honestly, and, yeah. And what do you got? What position you get in it? You know what's good? Oh, listen, uh, this is all the guy I got uh, I'm going home. I'm going to get some tonight. Um, no, honestly, from it, it's a really cool thing from uh, laying on your sides because that's oh, on your side. Yeah. She's on her side from, and he's behind her. Right. Uh, I'm telling you, the curves. For him, in the reach around. Oh, I see. Which yeah. you're going to become more familiar with. Right. Well, Drew will uh, Drew. on Sunday. Yeah. Happy release. But yeah. <laughs> Complete release. Full, full release. Yeah. And because in that position too, it's it's just an easier, um, less stress actually right. a, on the inside of the woman. I see. Yeah. Oh, I see. Right. Yeah. You good. Girl, in, girl. in your in your delicate position there, if you're yeah. concerned at all about spotting see, or whatever. It seems like you need a little. You, you need a little more penis for that position, though. I mean. Uh, you know, you put on a little weight with the pregnancy, your ass a little bigger than it was. Uh, your husband must have a little bit of penis, you know. You have to kind of wrap around a little bit there. I'm a happily married woman. Oh, um, I see, yeah. Uh, yeah, there's certain certain positions. It, it, listen, if it pops out every other stroke, it means you're in the wrong <laughs> position or you just don't have enough tool for the job. But you don't, don't need as much because you're, like the, saying, the woman is more exposed there. Uh -huh. No matter what, it's like you just, you know. I see, yeah. You don't, your penis Tap doesn't it. have to be as long because the vagina is dragging down yeah. on the ground. <laughs> wow. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. I didn't see this. And, and you see, to me, Drew, this is where Drew really thinks I'm nuts, but... To me, there's a weird emotional thing that uh, mama thing. Yeah. You know, it's like the belly's there, the kids in there. Now you're 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 doing God knows what to mama. It feels weird to me, but your your husband had no problem with but that. But you got yeah, and you got to remember that woman feels like goddess. Yeah. At that point, yeah. you know, I, I could see, I could see getting into that. It, yeah, Two and glasses it, it, of wine, I could think sure. I could get into that. The breasts are are very voluptuous. Then yeah. the the nipples are changing nice. and, and popping out. Yeah. They're, they're just. I see why gorgeous. guys look at those well, magazines. Why don't you guys adjourn to another show? <laughs> we have like a pregnancy line. Yeah. I'll tell you, uh, you, you know what? Mo has uh, swung me on this issue, Drew. I used to be against it. I'm now for it. 
Have you ever yeah. had sex with a pregnant woman? No. No, I have uh, I have not, but I have uh, I, I have multi magazines at home that have depictions you know, of a uh, young. I don't get the mother thing with it, it though, because hmm. wouldn't the guy feel awfully powerful in that, considering that what he's holding are you know two of his greatest loves, you know the one that he knows and the one that he. You you are you are not thinking like a man. Oh boy, so yeah, yeah, right. I, I'm with you on that, except for you're having sex, and it's kind of. Uh, I don't know. It just it it just uh, it, it adds a different dimension to me. I don't like to think that much, you know, when I'm having sex. It's just, you know, so. men 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 don't think in terms of love. They think in terms of objectification. That's right. <laughs> well, then check out all those lumps and humps and goodness. All right, hump that lump. Well, yeah. well, you're uh, 19 years old. What's up? Yeah. Hey, man. Um. Um. Well, first, I was going to ask uh, Dr. Drew a question, if that was okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, hey, man, I was down here in Mississippi, and, like, all these, I've got a lot of friends that do a lot of drugs and stuff, and and they're always trying to get me to do shrooms, and I, I am not real interested in it, but they say there's, that they grow all over the place down here. And I was What's your question? Of, well, I was just kind of wondering, like, where where at do they, do they grow and stuff? Cow pies. Cow crap. Really? Yeah. Oh, that is pretty gross. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hey, uh, Weldon, yeah. you, you don't sound like your brain could take too much punishment. You smoke no, a lot of pot, not. though, too, don't you? Excuse you me? Smoke a lot of, you smoke a lot of pot. Yeah, I do. All right, yeah. that's enough. Hey, li listen to me. Listen to me. I, I hate to be cruel about it, but uh, we've talked about this many times. Uh, some people are smarter than others, and uh, the people that are a little less intelligent should not be experimenting on themselves like they're a lab rat because you're going to go from dumb to retard in about five years. It's already tough enough going through like dumb, but going through as retard, now you're not going to be able to get even menial jobs. You really won't. Uh, if you got 180 IQ, you want to smoke a ton of weed and do a few shrooms and drop a little acid and knock yourself down to 155, fine. <laughs> you, you go from a Russian chess champion to uh, teaching math at, at the college level. I don't care. But if you're hovering around uh, 65, 70 in the IQ department, you want to knock yourself down to mongoloid, that I have a problem with. And that's the problem. Stupid people making themselves even dumber. That's my problem. I don't care if geniuses smoke pot. I, I really don't. So they're slightly, they're, they're, they, 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 they don't depressed. shine. I don't care if geniuses get depressed. They'll invent, these are the people who invent drugs for depression because they're geniuses. You understand? <laughs> I don't want the guys that are borderline retards knocking themselves down to the tardo, uh, in, into the tardo bin. You see what I'm saying? And yeah. if you're having difficulty forming, uh, uh, understandable sentences and one of the questions we do understand is can I do mushrooms? The answer is no. Right. There you go. All right. Uh, well, 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 thank you. Seven, thank you very much. Yes, Scott? Okay. Oh yeah, right here. What's up, buddy? Um, I've discovered that I have uh, these little itty bitty bumps on the base of my penis. Are they like little uh, around the hair follicles? Um, they're right after that as you extend toward the penis. Right, those are probably the scrotum, pearly penile papules, and Normal. that is those are little hair follicles, basically. Oh, Everybody no, 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 but this is past that. Like, I understand, but they're 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 like sweat glands, basically. Oh, they are because then um, I found like three or four more um, on the underside near my tip more. Are you sexually active? Um, I've uh, had oral sex within the last month or so. Really? Or you've never had intercourse? No. Okay. Well, you're un unlikely to be anything with the further capsules. How's that work? Who gave hmm. you the BJ, Scott? In my uh, day, didn't work that way. Um, her her name is Jennifer. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. Now, now that clears it up. Jennifer, Why does that I'm gonna write this down. <laughs> All right. Well, there, there. That's a totally different thing, though. It, when I when I say who gave you the uh, BJ, I mean like is she your girlfriend, oh, no, 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 co-worker, at a party, at a party, at a party. All right, this is someone it's, you didn't know very well. No, 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 I, I know her. I know her pretty well. She's, she's all right. I'm done with this. Right, thank you. We're the world's thank dumbest you. callers. We really do. <laughs> <laughs> who gave you the BJ? Her name was Jennifer. Aha. Uh -huh. She's pretty happy about that right about now. Yeah, met her at a party. All right. That's first things uh, right on up. 
Keep on. No idea. You know. You know what I did uh, tonight, and I, I I wanted to strangle the person. I'm such a I'm such a prick. I, I do it even in my real life too. I called a um, friend of mine, and uh, he's uh, he's married to a woman named uh, Missy, mm -hmm. and her friend answered the phone, and I was calling for my car phone, and I said. Um, uh, so a woman picked up the phone when I called my friend, and I said, oh, uh, Missy? And she said, no, this is Janie. And there's like a long pause, and I said, um, is, uh, I thought I called the wrong number. And I said, I is Missy there? And she went, yeah. Uh, is this her number? Yeah. Hmm. I said, Will you go get her and say it's your, not you, God damn it? It drives me nuts. Yeah, it's like it's like, what, what are you? What what universe do you live in where you pick up someone else's phone and say hi, and they ask for the person who lives in the house, and you give them like a weird, confused beat, and then say your name, and I don't know that person. That's the Mad TV universe. Oh my yeah. God, Drew, don't you want to kill those people? Mm -hmm. Like, what the hell are they thinking? Like, I pick the phone. I when I go to someone, I go to someone else's house and pick up. If I, Deborah, if I was at your house, you know how I answer the phone. Mm -hmm. Deborah's house. This is not Deborah. Or hello. Yes, this is Adam. Oh, you want to speak to Deborah? Well, hold on. I'm a friend of hers. Yeah, hold on. We Deborah, put something on and come here and get, to get on the phone. No, it's like I don't just say, hi, this is Adam, and just give like big long pauses so I can confuse everyone. I want to kick her right in the ass this moment. All right, now where the hell was I, Drew? Who do you want to speak to? Well, I don't have any more calls on my little list. Here. All right, Jerry? Hello? You're uh, 17. What's up? Um... Actually, I've had sex with four or five girls on protected sex, and great. great. Now, me and my girlfriend are trying to have a kid, and I was wondering, none of the other girls have gotten pregnant. And no, this is bogus. I don't know no. if I can no, or if no. I'm infertile or what. Oh, you've had, <clears throat> you've had in your life, you've had sex with four or five women. Unprotected sex, yeah. Yeah. Why have you done that? Why have you taken those sorts of risks? Oh, he's an idiot. But listen, how how many times with each one of these women? Um, with one of them for a couple months. A Cu couple months, so maybe, you know, 20 times you had sex yeah, with her? probably. Unprotected each and every time. Uh-huh. And, uh, and you've never got any of them pregnant. Oh. Nope. And now you have a girlfriend. Uh-huh. And you'd like to get her pregnant. Yeah, we're trying to have a baby. I see. And, uh, what, how old is she? 13? 17. 17 as well. And no. you're trying to get her pregnant now? Yeah. Why? Why now? Because we just both want a kid, and we've been talking about it. And we've been... Let me ask you something. Uh -oh. If you're not responsible enough to have protected sex with these women that you were with, what makes you think that you're going to be responsible enough to be a father? Um, I don't know. What may... Where's the money going to come from? I, Where's the education going to come from? I have a job. I'm, I'm in school. Wait, and wait. so then you can't be in school and be a parent. You, you can't you have a what? job being school or being Yeah, there. you know what? If, well, you, if you have a choice, if you have a choice there, make the choice not to. Do yourself a favor, do give yourself your girlfriend time. a favor, and do this child that is not here yet a favor. And let me ask you something. How long you, How long have you been with your new girlfriend? For like eight months. Okay, eight months. Let me let me ask you something. What makes you think you know so much about this relationship that having a child right now will make it more stable? Um, I, I have no idea. Exactly. And if you don't have any idea, then you should be thinking about that. Why isn't Why isn't that a thought in your mind? We've talked about marriage and everything, and we just... Spend no, you don't understand. I can talk about pizza. That doesn't mean I should be eating it. Yeah. I can talk about drugs. That doesn't mean I should be doing it. And so if you're in a relationship that's brand new, why do you want to add something to the mix that can complicate the situation instead of making it more stable? Well, I'll tell you why. Because she screwed up. She's pucking for it. And he's stupid and has a heart on and is going along. And they both have parents who had them when they were 12. Right. Don't, do, do, listen to me, please. Uh -huh. Don't do this. Don't do this to yourself. You're not prepared to be a responsible parent. If you're out there having unprotected sex and now you claim you're going to be ready, you're not. You haven't had enough experience in between one situation to the next situation to say, I'm ready to be responsible. What situation have you been in so far that has that has allowed you to be responsible? None. All right. You hey. jumped from one respon irresponsible well, situation Deborah, to another. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, was just, I, I don't want to bust it. Uh, don't I, bust this balls too much. <laughs> I mean, you're 1,000%. I don't want right, to. I don't want to bust your balls. I just want you to be yeah, able to walk my, away thinking about this. My question was just though, <laughs> if is that is there a possibility I'm infertile? Or? Oh God, we hope so. 
God, if there's a God in heaven, uh, you are infertile. Yeah. But, he, but, no. but, 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 but your 14 brothers are infertile, too. No. The fact is, you have kids. Listen, Jerry, you're going to have kids, but you, would you would you listen to me for a second, please? Wait five just, years, just, please. Just, no, no, no. Don't even wait five years. Just wait a few years. Just uh, get yourself in a little better position, get a little raise at work, graduate from, you know, uh, mechanic school or whatever it is you're working toward. Get in a better position. And that way, the kid won't be uh, is is will have a much better shot of working out. All right. All right. Please do that. It, it just statistically, it ain't gonna work, and you ain't gonna be the ones to beat the odds. And I know your girlfriend's got some problems, and maybe she came from some trouble. Uh-huh. Encourage her not to fix things with a kid, but to fix things by uh, reading a book, get a little therapy. All right. And okay. a condom. All right. Condom. Please. Lots Mary. of them. Yes, you will get her pregnant, and then you will be sorry. So do not do it. Absolutely. All right. Where the hell are we? Vince? Hello. You're 29. What's up? Well, I just want to say I'm a huge fan of Mad TV ever since cool. October 15th, 1995, when it appeared. Wow. Uh, <laughs> Mo, I think yeah. you're incredibly funny. And, uh, thank you. Deborah, I think you're super sexy as well as funny. Why, thank you. Oh, jeez. i got to work another year for that sexy thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting there, though, right? What's your name? Vince. Vince. That's Vince. Yeah, Vince. I'll get there next season. Vince, you uh, you watch uh, religiously every Saturday? I do. The, in fact, there are VIP skits that they did uh, recently. With the CIT. Is, oh, CIT. yeah. CIT. Where yeah. Mo does an amazing, an amazing Pamela Anderson Lee, yeah? And um, Deborah did an incredible uh, slow motion shot. But anyway. <laughs> my yeah, but mine. Oh, okay, nothing. My question was, um, <laughs> I noticed when it started that, you know, you were having the Alfred E. Newman character on the show and a lot of Spy vs. Spy, and it seems that you've kind of gotten away from the affiliation with Mad Magazine. Is that on purpose? It's or definitely on purpose. Is it, what, you're just trying to distance yourself? Or? No, it, it doesn't have anything to do specifically with distancing, 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 thank you very much, mm-hmm. ourselves from the show. It was, believe it or not, budget. <laughs> budget, because when we first started out, along with the Alfred E. Newman, we also had film pieces, if you recall. Mm-hmm. We had money. film blocks. So, and you notice those film blocks disappeared as well. It was about licensing fees and, and having to pay tons of money for those licensing fees. Really? So you can just keep the name, you just can't show Alfred E. Newman in spite of No, it's not that we can't. It just, as the show began to steamroll, it was more sketch-oriented, and we were bringing in people that really had great characters, and the show became more about that than it. anything else. We didn't, didn't need it. it. Oh, okay. It kind of supported its own self with what it was. And, and it was expensive. And yeah, Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks, Vince. Thank you. Thank you, Boo-Boo. <laughs> Boo-Boo. Yeah. Uh, boo-boo. <laughs> that was all right, that's the uh, extent of my uh, mimicking talent tree. <laughs> I do, uh... Oh, no, I got a sore throat tonight, Anderson. Uh, he wants me to do the uh, lightning round tonight, but uh, I'll tell you, <clears throat> I've been... Uh, Drew, how are you doing on your cold? It's, it's, I woke up... Uh, you want to talk about it? You, you yeah. got the weirdest stuff for air. Mm-hmm. I, I coughed up some a couple of fetuses this morning, I think. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, and it was oh. awful, and I, have had, I, I feel like hell and have all day. Fantastic! I'm glad I asked. All right, uh, I, I I didn't I, I didn't hawk I hawked up like um, like a pig fetus, but not a human <laughs> one. So I, I'm not as bad as uh, you are. And he's saving it for dissection later on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> that is uh, David Allen Greer vomiting on our uh, show. Let's hear it one more time. That's right. All right. <laughs> Deborah Wilson and uh, Mo Collins are both here from Mad TV. We're going to take a little break. When we come back, we'll uh, speak to uh, Megan, who's uh, 19, never been with a girl, but starting to be attracted to one. Wants to know if he sh- she should tell her fiancé. We'll get to that after this. <laughs> <laughs> 